What happens when a powerful icon is edited out of history? Where do you go to remember when nothing but a few photographs of him remain? This film is about the search for a voice. The voice of a man many viewed as a father of Pan-Africanism. His name is Mangaliso Robert Sobukwe. His words are rarely captured for posterity. His voice deliberately silenced. Even now, we are shielded from his thoughts and bold philosophy. Today, no film footage or recording of his voice exists. No other political prisoner in South Africa has ever been the subject of a special statute, except for Mangali Sosobukwe. The Sobukwe clause was to ensure that he remained on Robben Island prison indefinitely. From 1963, having already served three years hard labor, he was detained for a further six years without trial. He was kept in solitary confinement with no human contact. On his eventual release, he was banished and placed under house arrest. That as far as the government of South Africa is concerned, as far as my colleague, the Minister of Police, is concerned, as far as the Commissioner of Police and the South African Police Force is concerned, the breakdown of law and order in South Africa will not be tolerated under any circumstances whatsoever. He was never anti-white. He was anti-white domination. He was opposed to our being dominated by whites. To, to quote a minister of justice at the time who said that the man was like a prophet. He was, he was able to move people to do whatever he wanted them to do. And that's what they were scared of, uh, they were scared about. His power over people, his ability to talk to people, to understand people and to lead people. He led from the front. Monday, 21st March 1960, was a day masterminded by Sobukwe that changed the course of South African history and focused the world's attention on the brutality of the apartheid regime. From then on, nothing would ever be the same. Sobukwe's incredible ability to touch the hearts and minds of the oppressed and give voice to their suffering saw him mobilize thousands of South Africans who were prepared to lay down their lives for the cause under his leadership. The way he enunciated our political struggle was in a way that, you know, no other leader had done before him. And the impact of that, especially to me, was so great that I really admired the man I admired him then and now. Sobukwe's vision was the dismemberment of the apartheid dream, replacing it with African emancipation and dignity. Sobukwe broke away from the dominant political movements of the day to found the defiantly Pan-Africanist Congress. For generations to follow, his ideas found expression through successive waves of resistance that would bring the regime to its knees. Nkrumah, Nehru and Nyerere, all Sobukwe's contemporaries, acknowledged his contribution to the development of Pan-African thought on the continent. 
Yet, Mangaliso Robert Sobukwe's name does not appear on the roll call of world leaders. Still, there are more questions than answers. Sobukwe's death, allegedly from cancer, remains an event shrouded in mystery. Was he slow poisoned? Why were several surgical operations performed on him in secret? Those who truly understood Sobukwe knew him as a deep...